Hey, it's me right now. I'm back here with Kid Icarus Uprising for Chapter Trent. I don't know why I'm rolling all my letters in every word now. The wars end. I believe this to be the final chapter, based on a few factors. One, I think I might have heard that 25 was the number of chapters there were at some point. Two, it's called The War's End and looks like the end. And three, our file completion is 86.3%, so we have to be, like, pretty dang close, one way or the other. Uh, so, I'm assuming this is the last one. If it isn't, I'm gonna make a fool of myself here, because I'm not going to play this one on five first to get a feel for it, like I've done with the pre prior 24. Because what I don't want is to play it through on five. We have a huge credits roll and a big ending cutscene. We see the end of the story story and then I have to play the game again because that feels like it kind of the tension is lost if I have to see it twice you know what I mean so I'd rather just kind of get it in one well no we won't necessarily get it in one <laughs> but I'd rather just get it on nine so that the second the credits hit I don't have to then go back and play the rest of the game like skip the credits and all that because that'll kind of ruin everything so I'm a little nervous but mostly I'm pretty excited I'm thrilled to see where the end of this goes if I'm right that this is the final chapter I think we're in luck uh because if it is so then it's something that can be cleared in 15 minutes so it'll probably take us if I'm going slow and being careful like 2023 on a successful attempt which ain't that bad especially compared to like chapter nine but I'm thrilled to see where this all uh comes to a head you it only costs eight thousand to do or nine thousand ish to do so we can try it like hundreds of times <laughs> It's an exaggeration. I imagine we're going to get to use that giant robot we got in the last one. It's probably going to be hard to control and get me killed a bunch, kind of like the chariot was uh, when we raided the Palutena's temple. But I've, I've enjoyed this game to bits, man. It's been a blast. So uh, let's all hold hands and <laughs> run into the fire together. All right, let's do this. Got to focus up real hard and good right now. If I got it my first try, that would be awesome. Great sacred treasure, activate! Great sacred treasure is a big old robot! <laughs> I wonder how it controls. Oh, we have to do a flying thing in the giant robot first. I'm nervous, but I'm also hyped. Time has finally come, Pit. This is the final battle. That's, we've said Good that many times already. Thanks. Oh, it, it, this so is awesome. Ready. This robot. You didn't get too lonely without me. A little. What are you doing here, Veridi? There's no way I'd miss the battle of battles. So you're just pulling out of this war to watch? Is that what I'm understanding here? Or at least this robot is, is taking the absolute hurt to these uh, jokers of minions. Hades. 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 Oh, we're doing this again, are we? Hades. This time we got a robot, though, so you can't eat me. Hades. Excuse you. But anyway, <laughs> now it's You and me, pal. It's, am I supposed to be doing something here? I have no idea if I'm... Oh, that's, no, that was cutscene. Cool. Ow, ooh, ouch. Yeah, oh, you'll get a close look, all right. Pow, 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 pow. Zam, zam, blam, blam. Zoom, zam, blam, blam. Zap, pow, pow, it. Coop, blam, blam. It's time for you to pay. You'll see, all right. I love that these uh, shots are, like, homing, even though there's no homing on. Okay, uh, let me go to dodgy here for you. Thank you. I know. Yeah, oh, I, don't worry. I, I know you've tried all kinds of stuff. Your arm is stuck. I thought you were, like, a god. <laughs> Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, keep shooting. <laughs> That's the thing. I have something to show you. Please. Oh, no, no. Oh, wait, what? If you get caught up in that twister, it will tear you apart. It will what? Hey, but then what? Ah, ah, what? What am I meant to about that? How, how, what, what should I do to not be in that twister? It's the entire screen. I do not understand what is being told to me. Am I? Maybe I should just play a bit of Asa for now. It seems like it's just going to carry on for a bit. Yeah, anytime you wanted to jump in and lend a hand! Man, I didn't think it would be like boss fight with Hades right up front here. Is there gonna be a land segment? There's gotta be, right? I actually have no idea what I'm doing wrong to get hit by these. Oh, maybe maybe this charge attack is really good and we should be using it a lot. I, I really don't know. I suppose if it's an air battle, it can only go for so long, right? Oh. Did I beat him? Phase one? No, I'm fine, but I could have sprained my ankle. Yes, I, 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 that's my foremost concern. I, I <laughs> What's the matter, Hades? Fear. You had enough? Oh no, I'm just getting started. And now we'll bring you down to the land battle. You can't run from me. <laughs> Engaging pursuit mode. Do you, how do you know how to use this thing, man? You're like an expert on this thing already. I'm sure not, but Pit is, so that's good. Loading screen and then land battle, please. Oh boy. Oh no, please tell me it's not like three air battles back to back. I thought I'd left you behind. You're not like faster than Big Robot. Not when I've got the great sacred treasure. My machine gun robot girlfriend is too powerful. Keep up with me on your own. Exactly! Now you're getting it! it wasn't cool oh, of you I'm, I'm like shooting his feet. Oh, After he's got turrets all, on his ankles. This is our final battle. Oh, I was just going to make a quick stop to decimate a country or two. Hey! Rude! Battle, why would you do that? Probably so he could fuel up on souls. Oh, yeah, that actually yes, makes a lot of sense. I was hoping to be pity on top of a mountain of corpses. Well, uh, I, I don't need anything so high maintenance. With him hot on my heels. 
What a kill joke. He's got like barnacles on him. Your hunger for destruction is as boundless as it is callous, Hades. Ow. Plus a Ow. mountain of corpses. Ow, why is this all hitting me when I'm dodging really well? What did he say, Icky? Face guns? Oh boy, Not I'm gonna die a lot on this with all this uh, friggin' uh, air battles going on. At least it doesn't control too differently from the normal air battles, unlike that like chariot thing. Oh, is this is the purple one the Mona actually supposed to be shooting? Because it's the only one with an arrow on it. I think maybe that's the one I'm actually that, that is actually dealing damage to him if I shoot it. Okay, smash. Land battle, please, so I can use my heels. <laughs> Rude. You're incorrigible, you are. Stop shooting me. I've said that since the beginning of this game. No, it's it's changing shape again. Dude, this thing is all kinds of powers. But not the power to heal us, I guess. <laughs> oh, healing orbs. There we go. Exactly what he's like. I prefer to think of it as my devastation ensemble. Oh, cool, I guess. Whatever you want to characterize it as. You know, weddings, Armageddon. Uh, uh, yeah, that that stuff. Am I supposed to be shooting him in the face right now? It feels like nothing's doing any damage. I'm just trying to get rid of the weapons, maybe. Uh, I don't know which part of him is vital at the moment. There's no, I don't see a purple arrow over or anything, so I'm just gonna try and get rid of his weapons so you can stop shooting me. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait, I don't, I just like that heartily. Uh, hand, shoot hand, shoot hand. Yes, shoot hand. Good. Now shoot face, shoot eyes. Don't know what I'm shooting. <laughs> I can't believe I'm still alive. Other hand, yes. Shoot other hand. Yes, that I can do. Oh boy. Oh heckins. Oh oh golly gee. <laughs> oh now he's got chest balls. No wait, too many chest balls. Okay, no, there's a purple arrow of this thing here, so I'm just gonna keep trying to shoot it. I'm not even gonna try to take out the weapons because I don't think I'm gonna be able to manage it in time. Hey, okay, at least I seem to have my defense from my. Uh, oh, ooh, that was the wrong side of the screen to be on. I seem still have my defense of my artillery cause. I'm not dodging anything here. I'm about to die. I got him. Can we heal me yet? To the peak of oh my god. Hey, whack! Cut that out! Oh my god, how many phases does this robot have? I'm the multi phase boss right now. Please don't put me back into play here because I have no health. I was literally in crisis mode before that. I know, right? Heal, please? Land battle, please? It has what? <laughs> Dude, Pit is like an expert mech piloter. Oh my god. Please say I heal before I get to fight the rest of this. This is so intense, dude. Did he just get longer legs? Oh, there are heals. Okay. Oh, I move so fast now. I just want all the heals. Okay. Oh. Got it. Learning. Slowly but surely I'm learning. So what am I supposed to shoot here? Oh, so I'm just supposed to deflect him for the moment. I'm not actually supposed to uh, uh, try and shoot him. Oh, no. I am shooting him in, like, the gut, I guess. Yeah, that's it. But I, I want to stop shooting whenever he shoots so that I can avoid these. At least they're not too hard to avoid. Oh, he's got something new coming up, though. Uh, barriers. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, are the barriers different colors? I can't tell. It's fine. I'll just, I'll just dodge around them. I move super fast and everything. Okay. Um, 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 um. Doing a lot of shooting. A lot of shoot. They'll shoot the blue ones, but not the purple. Oh, wait. I didn't shoot them in time or something. I don't know what it was, but the game didn't like it. Oh, having to hit him in the gut is really difficult here. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm really doing a bad job here. I didn't realize for the first, like, half of this while he was doing the easy ones that I was supposed to be shooting his gut, so I'm, like, way behind schedule in terms of dealing damage to him. <laughs> Come on. This phase be over now. Ah, damn. Hey, well. We got to, like, the fourth phase on the first try. That's probably good. It didn't even do the funny music for us this time. Oh no, two of my biggest pet peeves cooperating. <laughs> the endless air battles and it's a final boss that works completely differently from the rest of the game. Oh no. It's fine. We got pretty far fluking it the first time. It's not completely different from the rest of the game, but it's it, it this thing handles very differently from the other air battles and also Hades has different weak points than most of the bosses we fought so far. Oh, so wait, if my power doesn't matter, then maybe uh, like like my weapon, they're not going to let me use it, then maybe I should just uh Equip one that's got better defense than mine, maybe? Or maybe it's getting my range stars, too. I don't know. But we did just get that pudgy palm that had, like, six defense and five and a half range stars or something, right? I might try changing it if we die again. So how do I avoid this at all? I have I have no idea how to avoid this thing at all. I just... Because like, I can't move from the middle of the screen. Like, I'm holding left... Okay, now I can... I, I have no idea. <laughs> I you're supposed to do that one. It's kind of hard to see where anything is when the screen shakes this much. 
I have no idea if the rapid fire or the charge shots are better on this thing. I guess I may as well go for the charge shots since I can actually dodge that way. Except for those arrows. Oh yeah, and the bullet types all change every time the phase changes. Like I have a different gun now. So anything I learned about the last one is out the window. Yeah, I have no idea where I'm supposed to fly for this part. And I think maybe if you had the 3D on, it would be a little more clear what, what precisely was safe here, but I'm just kind of guessing. And you can't just take out the guns, they come back, so... It's not like you could carve out a, a safe spot to be. I'm profiting hearts each time, though, that's neat. Let me try uh, equipping a different weapon. Uh, this one's got defense plus six. Uh, who knows if that carries over to this, but let's give it a go. I'm gonna be so screwed if, if after this bit there is a bit on the land. <laughs> And I have to fight with the stupid weapon I never know nothing about. I get the sense this was the kind of thing where they were maybe running out of time to do it a bit, because from a player perspective, it's not really very clear how to dodge a lot of this. It feels like maybe they didn't quite have quite as much time to playtest this bit or something. The Twister one especially. But again, maybe the 3D is, helps. Stamina steering contest, don't mind us. Oh, okay, I think the weapon you have actually does affect your damage, because this used to only take three charge shots with my artillery claws, and with this weapon it now takes four. So dang. Dude, the way I completely lucked through this part in my first go-around... <laughs> ...and didn't die? I can't imagine. Oh, I didn't know, realize he cut off his legs when he said that. <laughs> first time. Haha, <laughs> wordplay. What do you reckon that means we're halfway <laughs> at this point? Oh no. Oh, that was what it was. He grew That's new legs. Alright, this segment gone. gone. That's new. Progress. Oh, don't say now it goes to the land battle. So I was really close to the artillery clause then? Oh, I this hope not. Because <laughs> I don't know how to use this weapon at all. Wait, wait. Huh? <laughs> Oh, well, that's definitely got to get rid of the robot at least, right? Oh no! Do I have to bullet time pit somewhere? I feel like I'm controlling him, kind of. Hey, it's cool. It, was, it helped somewhat. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. I'm doing my best to wake up. Oh my god, it went all out of whack there for a second there. Okay, good. I'm landing on the land and not in the water, which is better somehow. Why is that better? <laughs> Seems like that would maybe hurt more. Well, I guess at this height, it doesn't matter at all. At all. What am I supposed to do? I'm putting my target on him, but it's not doing anything. Uh, okay. I don't know. What do I do? I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. I'm trying my absolute hardest. It's 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 kind of really hard, if I'm honest. It's difficult. It's exceedingly challenging to keep it on the same place for any length of time. What is happening? Did I mess it up? Ugh. Oh, huh? Medusa? Medusa? Kaiju battle? But we defeated you. Why are you? Hell us? yeah! Hades keeps reviving, but I won't play the puppet anymore. Oh, I knew I was right to be thirsting for you. <laughs> You're cool as hell! Oh my god, she punched his head off, did she? And she's missing arms? I am- no, no. People are losing things. How I'm so confused. I am your master Medusa, and I will revive you as many times as I desire. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, wow, now it looks like the Disney Hades. <laughs> ah, he just sure you can turn into nothing. Well, it gave us a moment to catch our breath at least. Thanks, Medusa! <laughs> How could you do that? You look like you need help, Pit. What, again? We're gonna fly more? No, that's not what I want. Did you just pick up a gun of the cannon? Of the, the, the robot? Let's finish this once and for all. Oh, it's more flying. <laughs> you can't be serious. And I have no health. Okay, Please heal me, game. Plan. It'll take some time to pull it off, so just tough it out for a little longer. Ooh, ooh. I'm using my powers to charge up the gun of the great sacred treasure. Once it's fully charged, let loose. Oh, so I just have to survive for a bit here, which I'm definitely not gonna do! <laughs> But if that actually is the end, when you charge up that gun, then presumably, uh, it's- there is no land battle, and it's better if I just keep with this weapon. If you get caught up in that twister, it will tear you apart! <laughs> so it's just a memorization thing, I guess. Stay at the right for the first one, the left for the second one, 
Oh, that's all. Okay. I don't think there was really any visual indicator, to me at least, of which side to stay on for those. If the music is dope. Well, I say at least. <laughs> Everything about this is dope. The music especially, though, is dope. Imagine if this wasn't the last boss. There's <laughs> like five more chapters after this. Another fake out villain. I also appreciate that they made it cheap so you can just try it over and over again, basically. I do love how he's just Chip of Theseusing his way through this whole battle. So, oh, you cut my legs off? I got new legs. Punch my head off? Guess what? Now I've got blue hair. It's very, very Hades-like. <laughs> as in Hades as we know him in this game. Speaking not about the mythology. That face has all the health. Boom! <laughs> Oh, right, I have to bullet time this. Bit. Okay, Pit, I've got a plan. It'll take some time to pull it off, so just tough it out for a little longer. I'm using my powers to charge up the gun of the great sacred treasure. Once it's fully charged, let loose. What a pest you are! I fight for all creatures living and breathing. I fight for all departed souls still hanging in limbo. But most of all, I fight for Lady Palatine. The goddess of light. And it's in all their names that I will crush you, Lord of the Underworld. I won't let you desecrate another soul. Now! Oh, I launched the shot. Now! Is that it? Did we do it? I should let go of the controller because I have no idea. Pally! Take that, you, you big bastard. I'll teach you to put a projector screen of my girlfriend but you in your stomach. Like me, Pitt. The nerve of you. I know I'm the worst, eh? <laughs> if that's it, that was pretty sweet. I also don't really have any idea what that was about, <laughs> that whole last sequence. But cool! Please say the war is over. Yay! No deaths in Tensity 9! We did it! Cool! <laughs> I mean, nothing like a giant disembodied robot arm to save the day. Man, Pitt's clothes are always just getting ripped up in this game. Victory! Ha. Huh. Oh, that's why he says that in Smash when you beat a battle. I see. I hear cheering! Listen to those cheers! We did it! We saved every living thing! Everywhere! Everywhere, all of the living things. <laughs> Except for the ones we didn't. <laughs> Yay! Oh, credits already, sweet! What's that? Humans! You might live for this adoration, but I'm not fooled by those tears at all. Well, uh, Sometimes let's talk about this. Humans are closest to the gods, but she can be a real yeah, I didn't like that argument either. Why do you care so much about them? Well... Oh, Fred Tattashore is mine. Humans gotcha. are the only ones with heart. Uh-uh, not true! All living creatures have an essence that can be described as heart. <laughs> and they the all, several have literally have devotion. hearts. That's what I mean by heart. Only humans believe in gods. Only humans respect the gods. Our love is Troy Baker. Hey, you're not a god. And Phosphor was the same and person as Gal. Are you saying only believers deserve protection? Let him enjoy his moment in the sun. He saved everyone, not just in humans. The sun. <gasps> then what's the point of faith and devotion anyway? Flattering up the gods to get... Greedy wishes granted? That's one way of looking at it. <laughs> I mean, kinda. <laughs> I think it's more of a framing huh, device. Hey, pay attention! I'm talking at you! Palatina! <laughs> you, you do that quite a lot. It's true. Humans are simple, selfish little creatures who are driven by greed. Can't Sounds disagree. A lot like us gods, wouldn't you say? No way! <laughs> Nobody could be as selfish as the gods. Hmm. <laughs> That's it. I'm <laughs> done here. You guys can help. Well, thanks. I worked kind of hard for it and all, so uh, peace out. See you another day, I guess. <laughs> and there it goes. Eat. Oh, am I going to be flying through the credits? Oh, is this going to be one of those things where you like shoot the letters and stuff? Yeah, it's like Monkey Ball, kind of. Uh, uh, take that, that? Sakurai. Do you hear the people's cheers? <laughs> Just kidding. I love you, Sakurai. Nice game. Sweet. 
Uh, well, normally I would talk over the credits, but I kind of have to be playing now, so I guess I'll leave it for a bit, and let's just shoot some nims! Oh, right, the bloody huge draws. I have no idea, um, uh, if we're gonna get anything for shooting all these credits. Watch there be one of the restaurant tiles is get all the credits in the, in the credit roll. And I already missed, like, the first one, so... We're toast. So what's this? Uh, let me just see if I can remember the names of the chapters as we're doing this. This is Pandora's Labyrinth of Deceit, which I don't remember. Oh, yeah, Dark Pits theme, my favorite. This, this is Dark is Pit. No pod. I'll take care of him. Character modeling. You, you all did great. Actually, I uh, the Seafloor Palace is Thanatos. Formerly known as Thanatos. A space kraken? Uh, well, the spaceship, spaceship where yes. Although where you fight the space kraken. Neat, we're just getting, like, launched through all our, uh, our past memories of battles here. Chapter 9, ever. the big confrontation with Medusa. Medusa's final battle, I think it's called, which ended up not being true. She punched Hades a few times. Uh, chapter 10, the phoenix, anyway. It's just called the immortal phoenix? Bomb. No, the seed of something. Uh, inside the reset, it's just called Wrath of the Reset Bomb, this one? And then 12 is the reset bomb. Factory. No We're halfway through the game now. With all this firepower, Arlon, must Arlon on the Lunar Earth. Sanctum. One of the coolest missions in the game for sure. I'm far too busy. Now that I'm listening for it, it's definitely Troy Baker, but I wouldn't have guessed it. Uh, and this uh, Lightning Temple, Phosphora. She didn't really come into the story as, again later on as much as I was expecting. Pyron, who was also. Uh, um, uh, uh, What's his face? Troy Baker. <laughs> Which again, now that I'm listening, I can hear. Oh, sorry, I've missed like a bunch of the mission names that we're doing. There was uh, all the arm ones. We're at the end of the arm strain anyway. And then Ring of Chaos. No one knows what happened. And that's Fred Tattashore, which I can also kind of hear. Uh, now we're in. Well, the Lightning Chariot. It's the. It's the, the Vehicle Master's Temple, basically. Everything is wrong. Uh, taking down Paltana again. Well, for the first time, really. Chaoskin? The Chaos Vortex, then? Pig gets hurt, so we now play as Dark Pit. And we go take down Amazon Pandora at the Fountain of Youth. I mean, actually, I kind of liked her hair better as Fiery. Hades' gut. So cute. That's why I'm testing this young warrior. Uh, Dintos. He has the and, heart to operate and the three trials. And our final chapter we just did. Hades. 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 It's on. Didn't they say that in chapter 23, though? <laughs> anyway. Oh my god, I'm an angel in space again. Project Zora Nintendo. Woohoo! We, we did it. It's been did. I'm so happy. Project Zora, if I'm not missed. Oh, now you're going to count my hits. Real, real nice. If I'm not mistaken, Project Sora is was like an ad hoc studio they made for this game, and then it disbanded basically right after the end. And there it is, uh, one little angel feather, a floating to the ground. Sweet. I don't know what this tiny blue line across this thing here is. Maybe it's an emulation bug. Do I hit start? I do. Yes, sir, I do. And back to. T oh my God! Oh, there is a Hades treasure hunt. I figured there had to be one more, right? Because oh my, take cover! I, oh my god, it's not done! I think it was just giving us a bad ass! Tell my wife! I love her! I'm not married. But I sure did love this game! Hang on, now we gotta check out the treasure hunt tiles. I figured there would be a Hades treasure hunt. It looked like there was room for it and all. We've got a, a fair chunk of it already. Okay, so the ones we just did here. Uh, clear all chapters in are intensity, in on intensity. Intensity 5 or higher. Clear it within 15 minutes, which we also did. So we unlocked Boom over Tars for being the game... The last mission of the game. I wonder if those are... You're good. Whew, okay, so, <laughs> as far as the Hades treasure hunt, let's look, quickly review these and then I'll get into my end game review, I think. Use 150 special attacks. Which ones are special attacks? I don't actually know. Is that, oh, is that the air thing? Thing in the air? Maybe. You get an orn for that. It's over a million hearts. Defeat Gal with a dash melee attack, which, oh, right, we did because we did the, um, we, that was our mission where we, we, I'm pretty sure we did that mission at some point with an upper dash arm. Buy 100 weapons? Oh, we sure did a lot of that. <laughs> Clear chapter 18 within 14 minutes. Don't remember which one that was. Oh, is that Ring of Chaos? No. Don't forget to take a break, the game says. Boss battle? Oh, you gotta be kidding. I will do no such thing. It's like a boss rush. I guess it'll be one of the requirements. I'll have to do it. Which one's chapter 18? Oh, that is Ring of Chaos. Cool. Uh, recover onto your feet from a knockback a hundred times. I've been doing that quite a lot. I get knocked over frequently. Acquire a, a huge club with a melee combo modifier. Acquire Raptor Claws with a status res resistance modifier. Use a hundred items. Defeat the Chaos King without letting get Dark Pit get taken down. I didn't even know it was an option. I'm glad it didn't happen. 
Fire a total of 50,000 shots. Defeat 50 souffles. We've taken on any of those. Achieve a high score of a million. Character chapter 22 in 11 minutes. Intensity 7.5 or higher. Chapter 20. Virus. That's a new power for sure. 22 is that? Uh, oh, that's that's Dark Pits. Right, okay. But most of that is rail. So it's basically like how fast did you clear the bosses and also how uh, how, how fast did you clear the, the, the soul-eating monster and, and Pandora, basically. 11 minutes, really? It was only that long? Felt like an eternity. Uh, it, it took away all my exclamation marks, so I don't know which ones I've read. Uh, I think we were starting from this row. Defeat 10 rare treasure fish. Chapter 1, defeat rent twin bellows before it can roar one. So yeah, on, uh, effortless, we've done that a few times. Oh, this is so cool that a bunch of these are going to flesh out some of the earlier missions as well. Achieve a total score of 50 mil. Score 100 more hits than during the grain credits. One of them's going to be get all of them. <laughs> Chapter 20, defeat the Chaos Kin without hitting Palutena. It was kind of necessary. She died in like one hit. <laughs> uh, defeat 100 bosses. Ugh. Haze and Infernal theme. Is this maybe the last boss theme? I can't even tell. I got many. I, I played the first mission many, many, many times when uh, I was uh, grinding for that Artillo's artillery claws. Acquire 100 weapons. Uh, to beat the Dark Pit without jumping onto any platforms. I didn't even know it was an option, so good for me. <laughs> and that, uh, again, the upper dash arm was useful for that. Uh, I, in fact, that upper dash arm will probably come in handy a few times in the post game as well. Crypto to 24, uh, three trials with a score of 500,000 or higher. Probably was easy to do with our, our playing at the highest difficulty. Execute 2,000 dodges. <laughs> Acquire a first blade with an in parallel attack boost modifier. Uh, put over 300,000 hearts in the Phoenix College, and I feel like I've done more than that. <laughs> uh, use powers 100 times. Oh, we had to use 100 items earlier. I, was, I thought we'd already had that one for a minute. Acquire all arms. Oh, all arms, right. I thought it was like all weapons. I was like, oh, surely that I haven't done that. I haven't got all the Zodiac Chambers yet. Um, acquire weapon volume at over 300. Oh, way ahead of you. Beat chapter 17 in 18 minutes, which is the one right before Ring of Chaos. So it was the last arm one. God, that one was brutal. Uh, open 150 treasure boxes. You bet I have. Have 300,000 hearts in your possession. Uh, yeah, I don't think it'll be a problem. Acquire Guardian or Prize with a health mod. Clear all chapters on intensity 9. Yes. Oh, it gives you... A million hearts for that, sweet. <laughs> Wait, for serious? Does that mean I was really only at like 300,000 hearts before this? Huh. Uh, I could the last boss within 15 minutes. Use fuse weapons to create uh, 50 weapons. We did a lot of fusing. Acquire all cannons. Uh, perform 100 idle tosses. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to go do that. Just defeat the soul eating monster. Oh, you don't have to do that? Oh, cool. I guess, yeah, if it's a. Uh Flying battle at some point, it will just go away, or, or Veridi will take it out, or something. Crew chapter 9 without using the three sacred treasures. Oh, don't worry, it was a lot easier. <laughs> Clear chapters in general 30 times. Super speed unlocked. What? Cool. Oh, well, I guess we already, there are already boots that do that, but being able to activate it on command is sweet. Oh, yeah, the Underworld Gatekeeper. Beat Huge Arbor Born without hitting any purple balls of light. Is that, like, without them hitting me? I don't, it's been a long time since I played Chapter 3. Perform a thousand melee attacks. Is that really? I, I mean, I guess I... That actually kind of... I was about to say I, I haven't played many melee builds, but that tracks considering how many bloody swipes it takes for me with my artillery claws to smash those pots open. Crit chapter 15 with a score of 350,000 or higher. Uh, defeat 10,000 enemies. 10,000. Wow, just imagine that. I mean, we have been tearing through them. Chapter 7, clear the stage with a score of high score. Uh, Crit chapter 17 using claws. Ooh, yeah. And Crit chapter 21. Uh, Crit three... Sorry, it's clear chapter 21 with 35,000 or more hearts. And why not? Just for fun, let's go through all the ones we uh, now have have hints for. Slash, do we have any new hints here? Well, I don't know. I wouldn't know some. All Zodiac Chamber powers. Clear chapter 16 using a cannon on intensity 7.5 or higher. Oh, some of these are going to be hard. I'm going to have to get used to using different weapons. Uh, Crypto chapter chap chap 10 within 9 minutes. Phoenix with the Doom Cannon. Nearby in together mode 50 times. Chapter 11 in 9 minutes. Boss battle mode on normal. Oh, wait, hang on. So how does you select a difficulty here? It's not like... The cauldron. Hey, um, what? Let's. I didn't say it'd go. <laughs> I guess it's just at normal mode first, and then you unlock hard mode later or something. Acquire all bows. Play for more than 100 hours. Well, it didn't take us that long. But it probably will to get 100%. <laughs> 200 enemies in chapter 4. Defeat boss fro within 30 seconds. Some of these will be pretty easy on effortless. 220 enemies in chapter 5. Chapter 15 in 10 minutes. Chapter 21 in 14 minutes. Chapter 16 in 11 minutes. Chapter 19 using a club. All Zodiac Chamber weapons. Magnus with the Magnus Club. Defeat Magnus. Oh, I guess that means in, uh... The only time you fight him is in the three trials, right? So that's probably it. Get a Dark Pit Staff with a full health boost modifier. Narrowly avoid a total of uh, 50 shots in air battles. I didn't do even that. It shows how bad I am at dodging. Get all clubs. Chapter 14 in 10 minutes. 220 enemies in Chapter 12. Chariot Master while in the lead on the chariot track. Oh, interesting. Get chapter 20 using a bow. On intensity 9. 220 enemies in chapter 10. Defeat the Phoenix while in the air above the platform. That's sick. I want to do that. Chapter 13 using a palm. 30 victories in multiplayer. 40,000. Oh, I guess light versus dark. Is that the one you're allowed to do against bots? I can't remember. Uh, 40,000 points. Uh, hearts in chapter 16. Clear chapter 17 without losing any Centurion's strong arms. Oh, right. The Ah, oh, that's going to be annoying. <laughs> 
Not impossible, but annoying. Chapter 15, using a cannon. Get all staffs. All in-game idols. Oh, oh, there is a treasure hunt for it anyway. So I was, I was saying I'd like to do that in addition to the treasure hunt. But if it's gonna ask us to do it anyway, then I guess it's part of it. What does it mean, in-game idols, as opposed to what? Multiplayer stuff. Uh, boss battle mode on hard. A bull arm with an in-peril auto dodge modifier. So that boss rush, I wasn't able to pick my own weapon for it. Oh boy. We have a whole bunch of stuff laid out for us for the 100% run. Chapter 3, using a blade. The ar defeat the Encore with the Ancient Staff. Uh, chapter 8, without taking any damage. Oh, clear it without taking any damage. Straight up. Not finish it with full health, but oh boy. Matthew the 13th Bard, you warned me about one of those. I can't remember for which chapter you said it was, but... Now I see. <laughs> I see. I see. Oh, and then for chapter 14. Oh, great. I'm glad it's not chapter 9. Get all claws, all powers. Beat the, uh, beat the Great Sacred Treasure without taking any damage. Again, Effortless will make a lot of, some of these kind of easier, that where it's allowed. Acquired Arm Palm with a Shaking Modifier. Uh, boss Battle Mode on Easy. I didn't seem to get to choose a difficulty. I guess maybe it's maybe Easy is the first one they make you do. Maybe it's an order thing. Chapter 12 and 11 minutes. Dismantle 100 weapons. Acquire every weapon. Chapter 4, defeat the Great Reaper without climbing to the second floor. All right. Oh, interesting. You need a pretty long range weapon then. Chapter 24 and 11 minutes. Chapter 18 without taking any damage. And finally, multiplayer stuff. Cool. Well, my friends, this ends a very... Well, I was gonna say a very long journey, but really, it was only 25 episodes and probably only, like, 50 hours or something we've spent on it. Actually, let me check the records. Oh, actually, we're, we're ridiculously close to 100 hours on total game time, but the play time uh, is 60 hours still. What an amazing, amazing game this was. Like, I mean, like, just really, really good. At this point, I'm, like, I, on the one hand, I... I'm like, oh man, how could they not do a sequel to this? This is so good. But on the other hand, I, I, it's definitely like, it's like an incredible situation where if you're gonna do, do a sequel, you're definitely gonna want to like take your time with it, and you're only gonna want to come back to it if you're really ready and you've got something. Because this, I mean, the other, part of it also is that this game covers a lot of ground. I mean, you go to all kinds of wild ass places, so it's it's kind of it's it's a bit of a sequel of like, how do you top that? Wow, wow, wow! I enjoyed the absolute heckins out of this game, man. Thank you so much for voting on it, whoever did. Um, so my end game for you, I usually start with visuals, then I go to music, then I go to gameplay, then I go to story and plot, and then I wrap it up with any final thoughts and notes I have written down. So starting with the visuals, they, I wouldn't say they were like any, the particular element of this game that comes to my mind when I think of it, but it's all very good. I mean, it's, because it's uh, Project Sora and it's Sakurai, it's got this very Smash Bros feel to it where like there's all the like particle effects every time you get set on fire and like laser beams and and like dust effects when things hit the ground and it's all very satisfying in that way the models are nice they're good actually quite nice and expressive for, for a 3ds game it was a bit more than i was kind of expecting the only thing i can't speak to is how nice the rails look <laughs> but the locales are, are lovely anytime it goes into space and it's all glowy and pretty it's very the, the colors are very saturated and lovely in this game and it, it also provides some good contrast so when you get to a like a dried out dusty area like in dark pit chapter six you really do feel that sort of dryness and, and desolation. But the the visuals really do contribute to the the vibe of this whole world. I think it, this game develops an incredible world. Uh, this And I... This is kind of leading story, I suppose, and story and, and plot and, like, narrative and vibe, that kind of whole thing, which is we're not getting too in on the whole till later a bit. But um, this game creates an excellent, excellent and very clear world. I love the idea of this world where it's, you know, myths and monsters and God... Well, actually, that's actually the name of the second one, isn't it? You know, it's myths, myths and monsters, gods versus gods, but they also, like, have spaceships and fight each other with rifles and stuff. Like, it's it's a really cool aesthetic. The monster designs are all awesome. Um, uh, many of them, I imagine even the majority of them, are taken, you know, adapted from the NES game, which is, I always love it when you get to see, like, something simple get developed into sort of, uh, like, a, like a, more, a more fully fleshed out and realized kind of depiction of that creature. Like, I'm sure a bunch of these monsters, when I play when we at some point play Kid Icarus on NES, I'll see them, and in my mind, I'll, they'll be like the ones here, which is kind of cool, because anyone who played the NES game first is like, yeah, 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 that's what I had in mind from that, like, like four pixels on the screen. <laughs> that was kind of what I was imagining. So that's real nice. Uh, the animation's pretty sweet as well, especially when you, like, swing around a big club or something, you really get that, like, sense of weight to the whole thing. I love how animated Pit is. Like like I said, when, like, when he, he fires the gun, his, like, wings kind of flare up, and, like, his, you know, his, you see his robe kind of, like, Shudder in the wind and everything. There's lots of really cool effects like that. And uh, this is a point more just from uh, the way I played the game, but hey, <laughs> this game looks awesome in 4K. <laughs> uh, the character designs are super cool. Medusa and Hades in particular were, like, were really awesome looking villains. On the hero side of things, uh, Pit, Palutena, and Viridi, I liked all of their costumes. I mean, Thanatos, the Chariot Master looked cool. Dintos was pretty cool. Just a lot of really awesome and, and thoughtful character designs that were kind of like, it seemed like they would kind of go 50 50 between do we want to put some, sprinkle something in that's cool? Uh, for its reference to the mythology, 
or do we just want to make something completely badass in our in our own of our own devising? And sometimes they would they would sort of marry the two in really cool ways, probably ways that I didn't even know anything about. And I says the animation is awesome. Like I love all the little flips and rolls you do during combat. Like the like if you're if you do the sideways dash, it's just like a cartwheel. And then there's also like the, all the dodge rolls and stuff. Animation is awesome. Moving on to the music because holy, <laughs> the music in this game is amaze balls. It's got like thousand year door levels of. I guess Thousand Year Door is just fresh in my mind because we were playing it recently and the remake came out. But it's got that level of like variety in it and like Tales of Asteria, where it's like you never know like what genre will come at you next or like what, whether it'd be like a, a super moving track full of pathos or it'll, it'll be like a heavy bump and metal track. Like it's just got a, it's got a bunch of everything and some really incredible themes. I mean like that friggin um, I mean like spooky cursed alien jazz that plays in uh, one of the RM missions, I'm forgetting which one. It's like the, maybe the first RM one on the land battle. I mean, that was so awesome. Like it's, it's so creepy and I've never heard anything like it the way it like, that's the one where it's all like, dum -dum 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 -dum. and then it does this like rising like scare chord and then comes back in with like this swing jazz. It's so weird and cool. Then you've got these, all these like orchestral, like fa high fantasy sounding heroic themes, but then you got like the heavy metal of, uh, Phosphorus mission to Lightning Temple. Dark Pitch theme, uh, particularly the air battle version of chapter six, but also the little like chime that comes in now and again and it, whenever he shows up. But particularly chapter six's air battle theme is such a bop, dude. Like I, it's it's one of those themes where like once those first few notes come in, it's like, that's that's instantly addictive, and I'll never. I I found myself humming that like every day since we played that mission at some point or another. I exaggerate, but like it comes to my head a lot, and I listen to it a lot when I need to focus. Anytime I've had some like work to do these past few uh, since chapter six, basically. This game has so many amazing tracks, and of course, uh, I, I it cannot be said enough. Uh, I think it's just called Little Girls Theme and Dogs Theme. The first portion of chapter of Ring of Chaos, chapter eighteen. Chapter eighteen, right? I mean, the whole mood of that place it was amazing like the way it's like you're in this lush green sort of valley it looks so peaceful and then you turn around and it's just like a burning city on the horizon and the music is just that like plaintive little introduction to that melody of like and it kind of like it, it it doesn't really keep it doesn't feel like it keeps in a consistent like time or anything and then when of course when you have the the dog it sort of it, it contextualizes that the, the sort of wanderiness of those notes with the extra percussion and everything. I mean, that whole the beginning of that mission was like seriously one of the uh, one of the cleverest. I feel like tone changes in any video game I've ever played. <laughs> that normal boss theme is 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 super hype. It's got that sick riff. That's and then of course. It is that awesome. But then there's also that other awesome bit later where it just starts all all the bass is just going like like it's it's like the most catchy panic inducing thing you've ever heard. It's on par with I'm drawing the comparison to Thousand Year Door again just because it's in my mind. But like like Bowser's boss theme, how it's like super intense and and like nerve shaking, but it's also like all right, <laughs> okay. Sure, yeah, get that guitar in there, you know? <laughs> I could talk about the music forever. Like, each track I could probably say something unique about. There are so, there's so much good music in this game. Uh, but for fear of hitting myself, let's just call that there. I, I loved the music in this game. It was super sweet. There was tons of it. Oh yeah, and, and I mean, the gorgeous, oh, the, I didn't even talk about the menu themes, but the menu themes were awesome. Music in the menu theme. And like the way it swaps instruments from the strings to this like recorder or whatever it is. And then it brings in with the full like or orchestra. Like the way they just went all out on like making a menu theme and the upbeat version that plays when you clear a mission. Okay, I'll stop talking about the music now, but it's so good. <laughs> 
Uh, so moving on to gameplay. This is a pretty gameplay heavy game, so we got a lot to say here. This is where most of my complaints will arise, but um, they're, they're on the whole, I still like the game quite a lot. So broad strokes, uh, you got here a third person shooter-ish kind of thing. It's not really a third, I, I don't put it in my shooters playlist because it's not really a third person shooter. I would say Star Fox is a third person shooter. This is, this is like a third person action game with a lot of shooting, basically. Because there are also like melee builds and stuff you can do. So there's a lot I really like about it. I like the idea of a universal dodge mechanic that gives you invincibility from theoretically any threat so long as you time it right. Um, I'm a big fan personally of when a game, when there's no, um, how do I put this, time sync gap for a game. If you are skilled enough to time things right, then you should be allowed through as far as I'm concerned, which is one of the reasons things are like about... I don't know why I'm comparing this game to Thousand Year Door so much. I've just been playing a bit of it, a bunch of it lately. I guess that's it. I like about Thousand Year Door that for the most part, if your timing is really good, you don't need to be. I don't. There's no level requirement for like most bosses, if you can just if if you are just godly enough to parry everything. And I like that that there's something kind of similar going on here with the dodge. It's kind of hard to talk about the gameplay without talking about the controls with this one because. I think most. So I don't think it was only me who's who's criticized the controls in this game. I think that was kind of a. A pretty mainstream criticism as well, and I understand why. I think they did a really admirable job considering what they had to work with, which was a touchscreen and a, a 3DS. Aiming with the touchscreen slash mouse in my case feels good enough, I would say. Um, the idea of flicking it to turn, really, it's it's a lot better on an, uh, on, the, on the console. I found it difficult because I kept going off the, the, the bottom screen onto the top screen, but that's not how a 3DS works, so you wouldn't be able to do that. So it, I think it would be a little easier uh, on that. But for the most part, uh, since they give you options to customize the sensitivity of it, I, I found I was I, I, my, a lot of my uh, concerns were eased when I turned the sensitivity up, up a bunch, so I don't I could just do that to flick it. I don't have to like, because before it was like, I had to draw it across the whole screen to get it to turn like a quarter, which I didn't really care for. But once I learned that I could I could kind of tailor it to my liking, and, and it's, it, it, it does feel kind of dynamic in that if you flick it kind of slow, it does turn slower, whereas if you flick it fast, it does go really fast. So like, you, you do have a lot of manual control over like, okay, uh, now there's an over my left shoot, and then there's an over my left shoot, and then there's an over my right shoot. Like, you know, you you get used to it. Mostly, I think they balance the the having not many buttons to work with pretty well here. Because when you think about it, um, working using the controller that way with one hand on the touchscreen, the other hand on the stick, you have the stick on a 3DS, not on this controller. You have a stick and L. That's all you get. So one button, one single button to play this game. When you have an array of superpowers, you have walking, you have sprinting, you have dodging, you have strafing, you have shooting, you have uh, charge shots, you have dash charge shots. I think they did a pretty good job of delegating uh, actions uh, to e uh, each of the, the, basically the three controls you have on hand here. I remember finding it difficult to do with the circle pad. I remember feeling, maybe when my circle pad was just busted, but I, I, I remember uh, compared it to it, I feel the stick feels a lot better on this uh, to do like this kind of like tight motions with. Uh, the biggest problem I would say that I had with the combat is the fact that the stick is move, run, strafe, and dodge. Move, run, strafe, dodge, and it also uh, is, uh, what do they call these, dash attacks. That is a lot of things. Uh, so it was it was not uncommon. In fact, I would say it was frequent enough to be an annoyance that I would try and turn tail and run from something like this. And Pit would be like, oh, you want strafe, right? And he would just start strafing all around like this. And I'd be like, no, stop this. I'm trying to run. Which is weird, too, because in at least in training here, I seem to need... No, well, I don't know. I don't know how it works because I thought you needed to point at them for it to do it. But here I'm pointing away and it does it. And it just brings me over there. If I point, if I'm like facing away, then it's a dash. But if I'm, if the camera, it's, so it's not actually about the, my target. My target doesn't matter at all. It's where the camera's facing. So if you, if you can see an enemy, you can't run away from it sometimes. You can only strafe, which is really weird. Um, and the strafe does, thank goodness, give you some invincibility. You can see I blink blue when I do it. I think it's not quite as much as you get from doing the manual dodge. So at a, in an instance where something is attacking me from the left, I want to dodge to the right, but I'm also looking at an enemy. What I want to do is end up going straight right and end up over here and then probably turn and shoot both of them. But what will often happen is I'll, t I'll tap to dodge and it'll be like, well, you're looking at the enemy, so you want to strafe, right? And I end up you know, leagues off of where I'm trying to be. At, at that distance, it wasn't so bad. But if you're close to them, you go like, and like, you, you're all the way over. You have no idea where you are. It, I found that that happened disoriented me quite a bit. And the other, and the thing is, strafing is mostly only useful for if uh, an enemy 
ha has like a particular weak spot on somewhere. Like they're not vulnerable from the front, better strafe around and then shoot them in the back or melee them in the back. But it did feel a little uh, uh, obtrusive sometimes. And I get that you want to make it so that the melee combat isn't mindless. You want to make it so that like, oh, they actually have a weak point over here. I have to go and hit them here kind of thing. But given how imprecise the strafe is, it basically just does, it, it, does, it moves by some m amount that is based on how far away from them you are. And there, that time I flicked it and it didn't do a strafe. It feels needlessly uh, like whatever the game version of verbose is. Like I have to do a lot of things when what I'm trying to do is circle around to the front and punch. And that should be simpler than like when, when, when I'm trying to run around and do stuff. It feels like it should be easier to run in and do a melee attack and then get out. I think I might have just removed strafing altogether and just given a few more of the enemies uh, less like localized weak spots. Made their weak spots a little bigger, removed strafing. That way you never strafe when you're trying to run away and your, your dodge is more reliable. It's probably what I would have done. But that kind of leads well into another point, which is the melee combat. I liked the idea of the melee weapons early on because the club and the upper dash arm, I was really loving those. That was kind of how I was playing through uh, on my DS before I got into this playthrough. I like the idea of melee combat in this game. I never got it to work at all in practice, really. Um, save for that one time we got Dark Pit with the upper dash arm, basically. I never really got the hang of it. So for one thing, there's the Last of Us 2 thing where you hit, like, you hit the melee button, he just starts flying around the room targeting someone. And it's like, I can't even get him to target this idiot who's three feet away with a melee attack. He just starts shooting him from here. But if I hit the melee button, sometimes he'll just, like, lurch, like, years across, light years across the room. And I'll have no idea where I am, and then I'm dead then. The other trick is... It's like the enemies aren't really suited. They're not really designed to be vulnerable to melee because a bunch of them have projectiles, which... So, for for a <laughs> for a melee attack, they usually have some something that kind of um, not foreshadows it. What's the word? Like, telegraphs it? They'll go like, ah, uh, punch. So, I can see them going, ah, uh, and then it's like, oh, I get it. This is my cue to, you know, hit the dodge, hit the strafe. Oh, I, I can't strafe that. I'm pointing at the screen. Hit the strafe and get out of the way. They punch the ground there. I keep attacking them with melee here kind of thing. But... The majority of the enemies in the game have a ranged attack, and they don't queue those up. They'll just go pew pew pew, like out of nowhere. So if you are close by to them, like this close, you have a snowball's chance in hell of dodging that. So basically you better hope you've killed them with melee. Which is rough for normal enemies, basically impossible for bosses. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, you would have to know precisely what they're going to shoot at you to strafe around the other side of them. I guess maybe you could just continually strafe, but melee, it feels like melee combat needs a buff somehow. Like, maybe melee attacks should do more knockback so that they don't get a chance to do a ranged attack. Or, I don't know, I kind of, it annoys me when games do this, but it probably would make sense here if they, if, if you got a bunch of melee combat attacks in a row, the boss would go, rah, and like push you back without damaging you so that it's fair for you to get a chance to, because like, I, there are plenty of games that do that where once you've done enough, to, like hit up, hit them a whole bunch, then they like push you back so that you can, they sort of reset your positions and they can start hitting you with ranged attacks again without it just being an insta hit on you. I don't know, I, I'm, I'm throwing solutions here like any of them would work. I don't actually know for a fact what I would do to fix the melee combat, but it feels like it needs something. But that's not horrible because the ranged combat, combat is a lot of fun. I really appreciate the option to turn off, uh, aim assist and shot homing. I appreciate that there are options because, you know, for reasons earlier mentioned, the controls in this game are strained in some places, uh, but they've done their best, I'd say. I, I really, it's it's a thing I don't like when, uh, sh basically, console shooters, any shooter that doesn't have a, a uh, doesn't give you a mouse control. It grinds my gears when they automatically have it, like, auto-target enemies, because it's like, then what am I doing? I'm just, I'm just pressing the shoot button. What's the point of a shooter game if I don't point <laughs> the weapon? So I appreciate the ability to turn aim assist and shot homing off, because, like, if, if shot homing was on, I think it would have, I'm not saying it would have made it too easy. There were plenty of these, like, bosses and stuff in this game that would have been hard still with it, but it, I think it would have annoyed me that Shooting here was just as good as shooting here. I would have kind of felt like, what's the point of that? So, giving the option to cut, turn it off to cut, tailor your experience, I very much appreciate. So yeah, the, the melee combat, I frequently had problems with it. Is, is anyway, this is the real point. Uh, but the range combat was was pretty slick altogether. I appreciate. I like the powers. I like that you can build as defensively or as offensively or as tricky and weird as you like. There are so many powers and therefore build options. Oh, I didn't even talk about the weapon fusing yet. I mean, the we the weapon system in this game is totally awesome. Uh, I would really prefer. <laughs> Two things about the weapon system that I kind of was like, why? I think I would prefer that it not be random which ability, which powers you get from uh, a fuse. You can take, I eventually looked at that really intensive guide and learned that you could sort of tailor it somewhat if you knew the precise value weapon uh, values of each 
uh, add-on, like Defense and Dash Continuous Fire, for instance. There should have been, like, five or ten minutes more tutorial on that whole thing. They're just kind of like, try it out and see what happens, and that doesn't really help. You, like, if you want to make a weapon with specific specs, the game is not helping you at all do that, really. So more tutorial on that, but also I wish you could have chosen which, uh, effects to keep. Like, if, if there, because there are a bunch of times where, so I get there's the whole system of, it's try you want to keep two weapons of equal value, and then it raises the value overall. So two good weapons makes a great weapon, essentially. But the trick is, the only way to get a, a, an add-on you want, an effect, like the defense, the dash continues fire, is to randomly come upon it in the wild, randomly find it in the store. And in those instances, if it randomly has spawned with uh, range stars when you want melee, or randomly spawns with melee stars when you want ranged, you're toast. You gotta, it's, it's the bad weapon. You have to start again, because otherwise the melee stars will be taking up some of the value that you're trying to save for this other stuff. And not to mention, weapon drops in the missions are random. Sometimes the bosses drop them, sometimes they don't. Sometimes the chests have them, sometimes they have power, sometimes they have food. There's a lot of random going on. And then when you get to all that, when you fuse two weapons, it's random which of the powers it keeps to a point. So I wish it would have been something more like two weapons of 270 make a 290 weapon, and it lets you customize. So if one of them had a uh, two-star range, the other one had a three-star range, it would let you drag it up as far as four stars, but that would take up a chunk of your value. And then you get to pick and cherry pick which of the which of the attributes from each weapon you got to keep. I think that would have been a more gratifying way for the whole thing to go. It would have made it take le way less time. But the thing is, once I understood how the weapon fusing worked and, and some of the more intricate uh, elements of it, it was very exciting to go out and collect a whole bunch of weapons and like sift through them and be like, okay, this one's got some parts I want, this one's got some stuff I want, this could be useful to like walk it through the fuse system a few times to get it back to a staff so that I could like there's the, the complexity of it was really really enjoyable by the end once I got a hold of it but it could have been it should have been explained better and in the sequel Kid Icarus Descent <laughs> where they go into the underworld and stuff should have been fleshed out and explained more robustly and and uh given you a bit more choice over how the fuse ends up but as a as a uh, an option I liked it and all the different weapons they I saw there's a loading screen tip at one point that says the weapon you choose basically controls your entire playstyle and it does and I love that I think that's brilliant I appreciate that there's no character progression with this exactly like it's not like you upgrade pits health as it goes on it's all based on the weapons so each weapon acts as its own standalone build that you've designed well to say nothing of the powers so I like that you can like the playstyle varies very differently like sometimes you're a heavy juggernaut who moves slowly and then you get that one wham in and then you only need to hit the boss like twice to bring them down um sometimes you move really fast and you have to really dart in between them and like uh get lots of hits like that and that's an upper dash arm two different completely different melee type builds if you get a, a dash continuous fire that means you're doing a whole lot of this which leaves you vulnerable a lot of the time but um does damage very quickly whereas if you did standing continuous fire you have more uh moment to moment control of your action if you did a bit of both then you have a more well-rounded thing the charge shot thing I wasn't doing much in the way of charge shots in this whole game, but in the majority of it, I would say. But uh, like that, that whole that could really add some interesting pacing to the boss fights to have to wait for charge shots if that was your playstyle. The sheer amount of build choices is totally astounding, and each weapon has its own frame data, has its own animations, has its own bullet travel time, has its own damage styles, different effects, sound effects. Like the amount of work that went into the weapons is pretty unbelievable there are like 120 or something like that how many are so there are 12 per category and like eight or nine categories right nine categories i think so that's what uh 90 plus 18 100, 108 something like that there's, there's over 100 weapons anyway to model all of those to give them different bullet styles different sound effects different frame data and make it all kind of cohesive is nothing short of <laughs> incredible as far as i'm concerned i could have gone for enemy health bars Getting to know how much damage things do in this training mode is neat. I like that. Um, doesn't mean much to me when I'm in a boss fight. <laughs> For real. I didn't really see a reason not to have the enemy health bars. I think it would have made the whole thing a lot more understandable. Uh, but you get, you know, you sort of get used to it. And um, the bosses, no, I don't think any of them had like an unreasonable amount of health. I, one thing I really liked about the bosses in this game was, uh, I, I, pre I think a lot of games fall into the pitfall of especially on a hard mode, the later bosses have so much health that it's like, you just have to sit there and like bullet sponge it for like 15 minutes straight. In this game, it felt like the amount of the health, the bosses had an amount of health that was appropriate to the type of creature it was. Twin Bellows is a giant F off two headed dog. Sure, that thing should have a lot of health more so than Pandora, like the trickster witch. I agree. So, and more than like Dark Pit say. So I really liked that, that it, was, it wasn't just like bosses increase in health every single time. The level designs in this game were awesome, man. I like, I very much like the format of, um, seemingly kind of following the Star Fox Assault 
formula of air battle, land battle. Well, it, Star Fox Assault didn't particularly alternate them like that, but it is a bit like that. I found the air battles a lot tougher generally, which may uh, also be in part due to my build. I think part of the, one of the big things that I found it tougher, that made it tougher for me is uh, you don't get that kind of, that dodge manu maneuver you get on the ground that gives you invincibility. You get that like thing where you like dash to one side. I found it really difficult to use to any effect because it involves flicking one direction and then the next. It does take some time to execute unless you're like really fast with your, maybe, maybe this is one of those things with the circle pad would be easier. It takes some time to activate. Um, and so I found that if there was anything I needed to quickly get out of the way of, I didn't have time to do it usually. And it doesn't even give you invincibility anyway, so. I usually, if I, anytime I tried to use it to dodge away something, I'd get caught on it on like the back. Like my foot would get caught just as I went around it. I like the general idea that because enemy shots home in on you, you want to try and curve around a lot in big loops to try and trick it. I did still feel like there were a lot of shots where I was like, I have no idea why this is hitting me, particularly like in Hades, in that last battle with Hades. I think you saw a few times where I was like, I don't know why these are hitting me when I'm doing the circle. There was something to the, like the aerodynamics of it that I didn't quite, I, I still didn't really understand by the end, I think, but that's... Maybe less of a failing on the game and more of a failing of me. Back to the level design, though. I like the uh, I like the idea of these kind of semi-open but mostly sort of linear levels with a bit of uh, that reward a lot of exploration and stuff like that. With extra hearts to buy more weapons and, and uh, take on harder difficulties, find chests with new weapons, new powers to help you out. Especially early on, it was very exciting to always be getting like new powers and stuff, getting to experiment around with them a bit. I really love the the Tetris you have to do to um, to, to fit all your powers into a slot. It's like a Resident Evil inventory management thing. That's a really cool idea. I, I kind of would like. I would love to see a lot of other games try that. I don't know. Maybe maybe there, maybe that's a. I think it's been in a lot of other games, but I, I don't think, I think it's the first time ever I've seen it. It's a really neat idea. I think most of the levels were pretty well paced. Most of them, they stayed just long enough for you to get a, uh, an idea of the place. And I like that they were, many of them had their own gimmick. Like um, Pandora's is that it's all tricky and uh, visual illusions and stuff. Uh, I love that there were a few that, they, a few of them threw in some like quasi platforming elements and they were a bit hit or miss. Like there's sometimes they were kind of fun. Sometimes they were just kind of like, what are we doing here? <laughs> I will say the game did have a tendency to lock you in a room with bad guys, which kind of halted the progression a whole bunch, um, I felt. Uh, well, I say a whole bunch. It, sometimes it was a needed breath of uh, fresh air from like a really, you, you run through a fast moving corridor with like laser beams and then you screech to a halt at the end and it's like stop and fight here. And that kind of controlled the pacing well. But now and again, I felt like, like it, 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 I felt like a bit more early on even, it was a bit trying. Like in chapter three, the huge draw heads, there's that one bit where it springs you up to the top of this other thing. You have to fight like five waves of enemies back to back and you just start dropping random items down and it's a tiny little arena and one of them is a clan thing and then there's the turret thing. Like it was, it was like too much. It just starts becoming like a slog at that point. Whenever that happened, I just felt like, man, can we pick up the pace? Can we just, can we, can we get back to running through and blasting stuff? It was so much more fun a second ago. Uh, the difficulty slider thing. I think I do like it. It's weird because uh, I have a tendency in video games to, I, I'm not super fond of when a higher difficulty just means enemy do more damage. And that's kind of what these difficulties are. I think they do, no, but no, well, it's not just that. Cause they also, the enemy attack patterns get changed up a bit. So it's not just that their numbers go up basically. So that's, I did, I did like it about that, but I, I like the idea. Um, I liked that system in Super Smash Bros as well. This came out before Smash 4? Whatever the case, Smash 4 had the same system in the classic mode where you you spend coins to play at higher difficulties. If you die, you go down some difficulty and carry on. So if you want to beat it on the highest difficulty, you have to do it without dying. And it did, I, I like that in the end. It, it made for some really good tension in certain parts because none of the lot, save for chapter nine, none of the levels were too, too long. Most of them were in and out in under 20 minutes. So I appreciate that also. I think a lot of games would have fallen to the mistake of the last four missions being like 40 minutes each, which just, I would have murdered everything. It would have, it would have like killed the momentum you had at that point. Uh, this was the kind of game I feel like that, uh, likes to do that thing where it introduces like a new mechanic. To, it's like very much like GTA five where it's like, and now for the filming, like a, being a paparazzo from the back of a, a motorcycle mini game. And now for the rappelling down the side of a building mini game, you know, like these like random new little features here and there that like come up once and then never again. I still don't understand what was up with uh, in chapter, was it chapter two, chapter four? There's a bit where the grind rail goes up and they're like, you're gonna have to shoot all these targets uh, in, a, in a row to carry on. Was it, I guess it was just for target practice for ra the rails for later missions, but I thought, I kept thinking that was gonna come back. There'd be another room with a bunch of locks that would have a bit more complexity to it. Um, the vehicles, like, like the, the rails and the vehicles, I felt like both of them, they were either underused or overused, and I kind of can't tell which. I think underused, 
because every time it happened, I was like, oh yeah, vehicle. How does how does this one work again? It's got does it? It's got a force field or something. I basically never used um, the Cherubot's jump move nor the Ether Ring's force field because I was like. I haven't used this thing in like 10 missions. I don't remember what it does. And then now and again, it would be like, uh, okay, the uh, you know, now, psych, three sacred treasures. You've never used this weapon before, get used to it. Psych, you're flying the chariot for the first five minutes of this. Psych, you're f flying the chariot for the, la the boss fight of this place. Psych, the entire last boss is a, like a, a new sh uh, air battle that you've never played before. And that's, so it's a bit of, um, Particularly with respect to last bosses, it's a bit of a pet peeve of mine when the game is completely different for them. Can you imagine if Dark Souls did that? If you got to the last boss of Dark Souls and it was like, Psych! Now it's a Connect 3 to puzzle game! You'd be like, I'm, I'm not used to this! I've been fighting in Dark Souls this whole time. Uh, to be fair to this one, for the most part, it played like an air battle. So it wasn't too hard to get used to, but it was, it was a little obnoxious because it's like... I, I don't know how this thing flies, I don't know how this thing shoots, I don't know which of these two shots does more damage, and then it changes halfway through the pass fight again, and then they're like, uh, quick time event, steer bullet time pit into this, onto the land, and then like, uh, quick time event, uh, keep this cursor on, hey, quick time event, dodge all the things, and then shoot! Like, it was, it was just a bit much, and I kind of would have preferferred if it was just like a land battle where you scrap with Hades. I didn't get to use any of my powers in that last mission, I didn't get to use all the, the thing I've spent the whole game training, which is me fighting with this gun. So this game did, now and again, do that thing, where it's like, New feature, blah! <laughs> and you're like, I don't understand what you're saying to me. And to that point, um, I, I love the characters and dialogue. I didn't love when the characters and dialogue were the tutorial, but they were kind of taking their time getting around to do it. The most egregious example was Veridi going, you probably shouldn't shoot, and then I, I shot her, and then so, so it, it cut off her telling me not to shoot her, with her saying, are you an idiot or something? I told you not to shoot. So like, I didn't actually hear her say the words, don't shoot Palutena until she was already dead kind of thing. And even in the, that last boss battle, like they were like, shoot the blue ones. Okay, you shoot them, you start shooting the next ones. They're like, oh, but don't shoot the purple ones when you've already been hit by five purple ones. <laughs> so it's like, I, I feel like they were doing it to have a laugh. Because half the time Pitt would even lampshade it. He'd be like, why didn't you tell me that before they shot me? But it, it got on my nerves a little, if I'm honest. Uh, but broad strokes, I, I love the idea of this kind of action adventure slash third person shooty oriented action game thing. I love the idea of air battle to land battle being a consistent sort of uh, framing device for the missions. I love, love, love all the little, um, uh, the way each level did feel quite different in like the way it paced its enemies, the way it uh, grouped enemies together, the way it would sometimes have a little gimmick here and there. I love the way the shooting in action feels. Did he just do a melee attack? The enemy's way over there, my guy. Oh yeah, that was another weird thing. If you dodge uh, past a bullet of some kind, sometimes Pit will try to melee attack it to reflect it back at them, and it's like, it's gone, dude! <laughs> you can't hit it! But it would leave you vulnerable. Like in the Cragolanch fight, and uh, in some time in Chapter 12, it happened to us. Why would you try, why did he try and melee attack those? They were so far gone already. Why would you melee attack? <laughs> what? Why? What the hell was he trying to punch? Anyway, sorry, but broad strokes, gameplay was, was really, really good. Really, the consensus is it's a really good game with a few parts where it's like, well, they did the best they could do with what they had. And a few design choices that were a bit wonky. And, and here and there, I don't know that buggy is the right word, but there were some things that were kind of unrefined where like, uh, particularly like in the huge draw battle, there was the bit where it shot lasers out. Oh yeah, the danger radar sucks. Fix the danger radar. <laughs> it shouldn't warn me of something that's going away from me that way behind me. It should warn me of things that are coming towards me. Fix the danger radar. Uh, the huge draw, like bullets would sometimes come out of like the ground or a wall with no warning. Like the enemy would shoot through a wall at you and it would be, there'd be nothing you could do about it. Enemies would sometimes come out of walls. Oh yeah, that was one other little thing I kind of uh, was frustrated with. I understand, I can kind of get not wanting to have like a, a whole radar system like I'd suggested earlier doing it Metroid Prime styles. I do not understand not having a radar, making enemies spawn, able to spawn from anywhere, not like, a, not like just designated monster spawners, but they can just kind of fade into existence from anywhere. They can do so silently and they can do so a few seconds after you've come into a room. So you come into a room, you ascertain what's going on, you start shooting one thing, something shows up silently from behind you with no warning, and then you're mobbed by something from behind. It was it was weird the way that was. But she was a hard target to hit with everything. Oh, I considered, oh my god, that one just showed up out of nowhere. It's almost more insulting than it works sometimes. Wow, you just really spawned right in front of me. With the danger radar not really working properly most of the time, that was pretty grueling. You basically had to memorize a lot if you didn't want to get uh, jumped or be constantly spinning the camera, which makes it hard to do much. So I think make the enemies spawn with a bit more of a sound effect. Make them spawn from a particular enemy spawner that like spits out five at once so you can see where they're all coming from, where they're all going, or give you a radar, but not have none of those. <laughs> 
it felt like just one little bit more needed uh, there to make uh, so you didn't just get like jump jump scared by enemies every two seconds that you couldn't have possibly foreseen. Sorry, that was the last point of the gameplay. It was really good all, all together. As an action adventure shooting thing, feels great to play. So the next uh, and final category is story and narrative and characters and that jazz. And I do have a lot to say here as well. First off, I'll reiterate something that I said somewhere in the middle of the playthrough or somewhere kind of recently. I appreciate that they went the kind of um, again sort of Star Foxy method of let's not focus on like one chain of events and kind of follow it through uh, area to area, trying to keep an eye, eye on like which character is here, which character is where. Characters will kind of teleport around and like and the timing of it sort of doesn't make sense, but what we're focusing on per mission is the character beats and specifically like how does this move the story along and, and a d deep in our understanding of the characters. And that was, I think, absolutely the right play to go for an arcade-style level-based game like this. And moreover, I liked all the characters. I, I had, It's funny, because I had compared this game, not having played it too far, uh, when I had first started this playthrough, I had compared it earlier to, what did I call it? Tales of... All, all the, the adorable charm of a Tales game with the, the action shooting of Star Fox or something. It turned out to be surprisingly accurate. The uh, it, it does feel very much like a Tales game's characters in that they're like all instantly lovable and they all have something kind of enchanting about them. Even the ones who are total bastards like Hades. I mean, Pit is just so adorable and, and such a fun character and, and the writing is so good with it. I, I have, I'm not certain if this is a game where the localizers changed a lot. It's, it's weird because it's one of those things where the dialogue feels so natural to English that I can't tell if they just did a really good job of adapting of directly adapting the Japanese, or if they changed like a heck of a lot of stuff. Um, if you know, feel free to tell me. I, I mean, I mean, imagine the game was still silly and comedic in Japanese in large portion of it, because a lot of that stuff is baked into the visuals and stuff, and not just the dialogue. But I always, I can't speak to the how funny and like charming it was in Japanese. But in English, it was amazing. I, I mean, I just, I just loved them all, <laughs> and I like that each character. You kind of had an idea of where they are, like in the first few sentences of meeting them, but it always got subverted one way or another. Like Pitt, you think of as this uh, sort of naive, dupable yes man who just loves Palutena so much that he'll do anything she asks, and that's kind of what you get out of him from the first chapter. But even from the first chapter and uh, beyond, you start to see a lot more depth to him that he's he follows orders, but he his creed isn't copied from someone else's. He very much has is autonomous and can think for himself and can make. Uh, decisions about morality for himself. Probably best exemplified in the mission where he has to go against Possessed Palutena, um, the mission where he demands that Viridi let him save Dark Pit. Even in that subtle kind of throwaway joke line in Chapter 2 when Palutena would say something about, um, oh, it's convenient to know what bait humans will chase so I can manipulate them, and Pit's like, that's a little messed up! <laughs> All right? <laughs> I very much liked Lady Palutena as a character as well, that she, we kind of get to see that uh, sh she's good-hearted, and, and I like that she starts out seeming very, like, confident and wise and mystical, but you you start to realize she's actually quite quite shakable in a lot of ways. Um, and she, like, takes jokes too far. Like, she, she has a lot of flaws in a, in a likable character, characterized way. I think the most, one of the most interesting aspects of her character was that she does, regardless of how benevolent she is, she does ultimately have a strong understanding of the, the divide between gods and mortals and takes it to heart in a not always so pleasant way. Like she sometimes says that, like like the thing she says to Viridi in chapter 11 in particular, uh, what was it? She says, the humans are worth saving because they're closest to gods. And you're like, oh, that's icky. <laughs> but then the relationship between Pitt and her is interesting as well because with how devotedly he follows her, you kind of understand why she might have take that stance now and again that you know face should be rewarded in that in that uh that's kind of a the humans who are devout are kind of are, are like more worthy of saving or something like that and likewise um the way she kind of t takes advantage of Pitt's uh fondness of her basically Pitt usually doesn't complain too much he he, he screams at her in uh chapter chapter the raid on Paladina's temple I can't even count all the times I've risked my life for you and stuff and that's the only time I can really remember him actually saying to her, like, oh, I've sacrificed for you and this is how you treat me kind of thing. Um, but that's the first only time I can imagine him, I can really remember him saying it, but they, they dig into it a little with Dark Pit. I very much liked, liked Dark Pit as not just evil Pit, but a reflection of Pit's sort of latent uh, wishes and frustrations and stuff. Pit is this very dedicated uh, servant to Lady Palutena, so he's, he's you know, into procedure and into following orders and stuff, whereas Dark Pit desires freedom, resents Lady Palutena for having this puppet-like control over Pit, so he sees it and knows how to get to Pit about it. Also, uh, Medusa and Hades were just kind of like evil. That's that was kind of their thing. Medusa's like, 
I, I'm mad at Pelotane and Pit because they killed me earlier. And Hades is just like, I just kind of like destruction, man. <laughs> I hate to say it, it was kind of cool. You know, I mean, what guy, what, you know, doesn't like, you know, destruction. Yeah, you know, that's why we go to demolition derbies. Medusa coming back at the end was kind of fun. Just as a little comeuppance thing of like, if you, tr if this is how you treat all the underlings below you, this is what you get. Because in one of the earlier missions, I'm pretty sure Hades went like, he saw a bunch of them go die and he was like, meh, well, didn't like them anyway, <laughs> kind of thing. Whereas at least Palutena shows like a little bit of remorse when her troops die. Viridia was an interesting character also. I liked how um, they introduced her really strongly, I think, with, with Pitt and, and Viridia and Palutena all having that little discussion about, because they were talking about humans destroying the earth, but it, it kind of had greater implications than that. It was like, are the humans worth saving if they're so laden with sin, essentially, was like the undertone to all that. And they all took like slightly different stances. Viridia, Viridia's stance was no, so let's blow them up. Palutena's stance was... Yes, because uh, they're the closest things to us gods in the, in the universe. And Pitt's thing was was kind of, he was almost a bit more neutral about it. He was like, well, let's just not shoot anyone to start. Maybe, maybe we start with that and then we work backwards from there. Because souls are precious and life is precious, I kind of think. Is where is, it was sort of his driving factor. And he, he brought that up with Hades a few times as well. And I like about Verity that there, there never really was one big turning point of like, she's like, I've been wrong all this time. I shouldn't be bombing the humans. I'll join you you two. It was very much a matter of like, uh, Verity and Palutena get forced together out of circumstance because Verity hates Hades way more. <laughs> and they both agree that he's a bigger threat than each other. But then along that way, aside from Pitt and Viridi just growing a soft spot for one another, which was really cute and funny. Viridi, I, I didn't, I wouldn't say I like fully understood all of what sort of ch ch changed her mind and turned her. I think it was mostly like Pitt and Palutena's enthusiasm for saving the humans. But I suppose uh, getting to see Hades just going on this rampage of destruction and being like, I don't care what anyone says, I'm going to carry on doing this. Maybe may gave her pause to be like, ah, Maybe this is how the humans see me, you know? But I think I still think she was. A, I liked. I liked her arc of. of I, I I liked that they didn't put too much emphasis on it. Basically, is what I'm saying. I liked that it, it felt natural the way she drifted to Pit and Baldina's side. And by the way, it ends. It's you're still not really like. Yeah, she's definitely on our side, kind of thing. If I had one thing to say about the the sort of story and character arcs, I kind of would have liked if Dark Pit had stayed against us for a bit longer, maybe. He helps you bust in at chapter nine, he fights you in chapter 13, and then from that point on, he's basically a, an ally. And I kind of felt like the, especially with the whole thing they said about uh, with when Palutena was possessed. I mean, I totally got fooled. When chapter Ring of Chaos came around and it started playing with the same sort of Spanish like flamenco guitar or whatever it was that is in Dark Pit's theme. And then Pit gets trapped in a ring, losing his freedom. And he gets face to face with this Palutena who's just as corrupt as Dark Pit. It kept implying, and and Palutena calls Pit a puppet. I thought they were really building up to that, having been a plot of Dark Pit somehow. And I think I might have liked that more than the uh, it, it being the Chaos Kin, or even I think you could have twisted that so that the Chaos Kin like manipulated Pit into Dark Pit into doing it or something, right? Because they would surely see the value in something as chaotic as someone with who only desires freedom and has no ties anywhere. And it would have given a bit more of rounding to that, to then see, for for Dark Pit, maybe the thing that brings him to, to Pit and, and Viridi and Palutena's side is that even when Palutena is possessed and doing all these awful things, Pit has faith in her, but it's not blind obedience. He's still willing to push back against her, and that, can, and that would show Dark Pit, you know, this guy still, ha still values freedom like I do, and he's got autonomy. His faith isn't a weakness, it's it's a, a guiding principle for him that helps him find his strength. And then that mutual respect to be born, I don't know, I, or something like that to give Dark Pit a... Because I, I felt like Dark Pit's arc... Viridi's arc was subtle in a likable way, Dark Pit's arc was maybe a bit too subtle for me. And I think the tension between him and Pit was really good in like chapter 6 when he he really cuts to Pit's core with all the stuff he says about him falling Palutena and stuff. Anyway, it was a cool dynamic those two characters had and I, I could have gone with it a bit being a bit fleshed more, more fleshed out. All the side characters were super fun, I like that they spent a high effort on, like tr they got the cast known actors, Troy Baker, Fred Tattashore as some of these side characters. Akari Walgreen, I think I saw the name in there. Was that, is that the name? I know the name anyway, I, I, from something. Writing them, giving them different portraits and expressions, giving them their own little arcs now and again. Um, even when they, some of them fell a bit flat because there just wasn't enough time for it. I liked the, the attempt on that and uh, it fleshed out the world and you really got a sense of this pantheon of gods all with very distinct personalities and, and intertwining histories and stuff. The game did have a tendency to spout really neat backstory and lore stuff only like three minutes into a boss fight. <laughs> Especially Magnus and Gal. How could you do that? He wouldn't even know he had a kid that he lost to Underworld Forces if he'd killed the boss too fast. But on the whole, the characters and vibes are, are so good. Oh, the humor in this game was, I mean, it's just so funny. This is a really funny game. 
Floor ice cream gives you health! Was great. Um, all, all Pitt's little, like, video game references and his, like, wanting things to be kind of like a storybook. It reminded me a bit of um, Jake Peralta from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. That way he's, it's like, he just wants it all to be an action movie. That was kind of like Pitt. He wanted it all to be, like, a... A classic video game, and like he's always like, <laughs> like in chapter 13 when he's all like, you're, you're too refined to be a bad guy. Bad guys are supposed to be like, I'm gonna kill you. I, I mean, I could list off some of the other jokes that were great in this game, but I was laughing the whole time. You know how good it was. It was a funny game and cozy too. There's something cozy about it, like the, the way the characters banter and stuff. And but they're all, they're all very, you know, hashtag relatable and stuff. Like they're like, okay, you know, just stopped an entire fleet of murder space possessor aliens so let's get pizza you know ironically humanizing them in that way that makes i think it, i just i just like when stories do that i find it a lot easier to relate to and care about uh the, the drama and conflict of a character who you know trips and makes mistakes than someone who just kind of growls and then does a triple backflip and shoots everyone in the room perfectly every time you know and doesn't hurt that a few of the characters in this game are super tall, powerful women. It just doesn't. As for story, I don't think there was much else I wanted to talk about, which brings me to the end of the formal review period, if you want to call it that. Um, so let's check my notes, because I think I had a bunch. I, I think I've covered a few of them already. Enemy health bars would be ice. Yep. Too many horde battles. Yep. I covered that. I love that weapon type and modifiers drastically impact playstyle and basically control your, your build. Yes, I do. I think it's a very, I like that it makes you choose, basically. It's very, very difficult to create an all-rounder kind of build. And I think you probably could have specialized, created specialized builds for its scenario. But I chose to just get really comfortable with this one. Uh, spatial awareness kind of sucks sometimes, yeah. Because I get, like, again, no radar stuff going through walls and floors, sure. Oh, uh, yes, I appreciate you can essentially forge or find good gear early on in the game. So long as you're willing to play on the harder difficulties. Like, there are some weapons you don't unlock a little later. You don't have enough many hearts to buy loads of weapons to, like, really customize a weapon, but you can get solid gear from even the first level, as if you're as long as you're playing on the harder difficulty. So I like the difficulty setting for that reason as well. I'm not quite as fond of when a game's learning curve is this exact same as the curve in which you get uh, new skills and weapons. Or rather, sorry, when, when it, I'm, I'm not, sorry, that no, that is what I'm fond of. I'm not fond of when you can learn the game pretty well by chapter 3, but you're not allowed to have a good gun until chapter 20, you know what I mean? And that's the only thing holding you back from really being at your full power. I like that... It, as early as you're willing to pursue it, so long as it's not one of the unlockable weapons, you can get it, basically. It's more, it's easier to get more weapons later on in the game because you have more options of where to go to find treasure. And there are certain levels that uh, drop certain treasures more reliably. Like, there, I think it is chapter 14, the arm one, that most reliably drops artillery claws. So if I had waited till then, it would have been easier to get these, in theory. Yes, for, for the sequel, Kid Icarus Descent, a more comprehensive fuse guide would be nice. Yeah, and, and then, the, the uh, like I said, the finer points of melee. Sometimes you're not pointing them and it does it. Which just makes it exciting the second time. No, don't melee the door. Okay, fine, I guess we're meleeing the door. I was totally aiming at that person, but whatever. Let's punch a, a wall. I'm so not cool. Yeah, it's so fast. Not melee attack. Why would melee attack? No, this would not be the idea. And sometimes you are pointing at an enemy and it doesn't do it. Or sometimes you try the dash attack and it kind of... It starts too late or it doesn't... Or, or it like... You try and hit it earlier because it started too late last time, and so then you just do the shooting instead. I don't know how I'd solve it exactly. Maybe if there was a button on the touchscreen that swapped you from melee to range, but that would be kind of laborious. Oh yeah, this was a, a sort of more minor one, but uh, it did hit me uh, frequently. It's not always obvious where you can and cannot fall off the stage. Just avoid the mimicudi and just go for the... Okay, I did not realize I could fall here. Well, yeah, I really gotta remember, I don't actually have to fight all the enemies. Down, down, why not down? The amount of times I tumbled off a stage because I was like, oh, there's no way this is, this has gotta be a closed in arena. Or the number of times where I was like, oh, I can't fall off here, I have to be really careful. And it turned out there was a, an invisible wall over the edges. I, I don't know, maybe you could just like put a little, like, you know how in uh, Kirby's Return to Dreamland, the way they show you if dropping down a, a cliff is lethal or not is they'll show like black bars going across it. Something like that on the edges that are dangerous, just so you know. Would be kind of nice. Yeah, again, controls necessary evil. I, I thought at some point uh, while I was playing through that maybe they could go the Metal Gear Solid 3DS route of um, using A, B, and a Y, and X as like a makeshift uh, right stick to aim with, but it sucks. It, it would have been really bad considering the, the quick motion of aiming that this game requires. Like Metal Gear Solid, it, it was all right with the Metal Gear Solid 3 port on 3DS because it's a stealth game. You, you're very frequently like sort of slowly lining up shots, so it wasn't too difficult it wouldn't have worked for this game so they probably this is the best option yeah depending on where melee uh where, where pit is facing melee can operate unexpectedly a, a few awkward hitboxes and bullets here and there well, well, how was i supposed to see that we're not gonna get a drink of the gods so i really should have been more careful with my health and the lead up to this 
Did that do no damage to me, or am I going berserk? One of the notes here I have is just a question. Um, I think we we had a brief discussion about this earlier, but I'm curious, uh, if you've played the game, what was your go-to weapon that you used for most of the game, like, or your favorite one, or even a few of your favorite ones? Because, I mean, the weapon, there's so much weapon variety and build choice here that it would, I think it would just be cool to, uh, I, I'd just really like to hear about that and hear about some of the other ways that you can play this game, because I'm sure there are many. Matthew the 13th Bard, who's been one of my guiding lights through this, uh, which, well, by the way, I, I thank you very much, Matthew the 13th Bard, for having guided me through this point, and also to Azure Llama for all the cool mythology lore you've been dropping on us to show how uh, it relates to what they've written here. That was, that's been very uh, fun and, and definitely enhanced the experience. I really appreciate that. And thank you, of course, to everyone else who's been tagging along to you. This has been a very fun game to play with y'all, uh, which is why I'm asking this question of what everyone's go-to weapons would be. Uh, and if you haven't played the game, what kind of weapon do you think you would uh, like? Uh, whether it's a particular weapon or just a weapon archetype, like I think I'd be more into the cannons or the clubs. I'd love to know because the weapons in this game are dope. Freaking Skyscraper Club, come on. I mentioned this earlier uh, briefly, but I love the sci-fi ex-fantasy kind of vibe of it. Not only because it's it's cool, but also it informs the humor as well. Like the laser eye surgery joke that Palutena makes. I totally buy that they have laser eye surgery in a world where gods fight with like rifles and stuff. <laughs> Magic and grenades, it's just so cool. Oh yeah, one little thing here. I wish redundant powers uh, that you got from like as pickups in, in um, levels became hearts or weapons. I kind of don't like that it can give you duplicate powers because it's random if it gives you a power or a weapon, but if it's a weapon you don't want, at least you can sell it. If it's a power you don't want, it just disappears, basically. That's a little annoying. Just that it's random that way. I talked about I like how Dark Pit is not evil Pit as much as a, as a manifestation of Pit's unsavory tendencies or thoughts. And, and that it informs Pit and Palutena's relationship. Now you understand that maybe Pit harbors some of these resentments toward her and stuff. I've written here again that the music is amazing, and it bears repeating. Music is amazing. <laughs> the exact words I have written here is, OST is spectacular. Aurum Island is haunted techno jazz? Oh yeah, maybe I'm reading into this a little but a little bit. It seemed a little weird to me, like the only characters of color I think we saw in the whole thing were like the super dumb, disposable, uh, what do they call them? Strong arms? Centurions? That's a little weird. I mean, Hades is purple, but that's not what I mean. Well, I guess Magnus is the way it's drawn, it's, it's hard to tell. But anyway, uh, I don't know. That was a little weird. Maybe I'm just reading too deep into that, but especially considering they're all like Greek gods and stuff. This is something I should have mentioned in the story portion, and I totally meant to, but uh, I think chapter 18 is, I don't know, chapter 18 and 13 are like buttonheads for my favorite chapter. It's one of the two, I'm pretty confident. Chapter 18, had, I loved the idea of that sort of disarming fantasy at, at the, at the in early on, like the opposite of a power fantasy where they, because uh, the game, there is sort of like an overarching anti-war, anti-abuse of power message to this whole game. But you see that from the perspective of Pitt, who, in spite of being a very, you know, generous and good-hearted and, and uh, peaceful, generally, person, he's still like a, a very powerful angel who comes from a position of being very powerful and resilient and good at fighting. And he does, I do feel like now and again, he sometimes denies his responsibility in all these affairs, which again, he's fighting back. He, like they invaded him, but it was it was cool just at least for a moment just to see from the ground view. I, I, I think it was, it was obviously no accident that they picked a, a little kid and a dog, both of who are the cameras very low to the ground and showed these big scary buff centurions flying overhead in that portion when they like disarm you and you can't really do anything to give you that, that real view of like, this is what this game all 25 of these super fun chapters where you've been blasting through and making quips and stuff. This is what this is like for the people on the ground the whole time. And on that note, uh, it was a huge tonal shift, but this game had a lot of those. It had a lot of jumping around, which I, I I did like in the end. I liked that it didn't stagnate too long. The only time I really, I felt like I was like, okay, let's move this bit along a bit was the Aram segment. It was only three chapters, I think, but three of the 25 chapters, I think they could have been better spent on Dark Pit. <laughs> we barely got enough, we didn't get enough of him. Right, and and a particular element of that, like, uh, not to speak a little more specifically now, I very much love the, the moments where Pitt's narrating uh, in internal monologue while he's possessing the little kid and the dog. I adore how you get to see him working through that problem and trying to problem solve. And through him in character being like, okay, how do I get through this situation? You start to also understand what the message is that's being said there without Pitt turning to camera and saying, see, look! The war is bad for the humans and those caught up in the struggle that they don't have anything to do with it, you know? Like, they could have turned to the camera and had him say, It's so sad that these humans, they didn't even ask for any of this, and they're caught up in all this war that we God started. It was so much more impactful that Pitt was just, like, trying to focus on getting to the next area. But in doing so, he would be like, Oh, those Centurions over there, I bet they're helping the town, kind of thing. Like, he was talking through his process, and that was what told you, like, sort of led you to the message of, like, Oh, no, he doesn't really have a concept of 
how bad it is on the ground for these people, but he's starting, starting to get one as he's kind of panicking his way through this bit as the kid and the dog. I just, I, I don't know, that, that, the first part of chapter 18 there, which is hilarious because the rest of the gameplay of chapter 18 was horrible. Well, no, it, it was, I, I performed horribly, I mean to say. It was, it was a horrible ordeal and very difficult. <laughs> but that first part of chapter 18, I, it was just brilliant, the storytelling of that. For a game that's otherwise got good writing, but is chiefly, I would say, focused on being entertaining before being big message -y. It has big messages and tells them, but its chief focus is being fun and entertaining, I think. Um, so it was nice to have a bit of pace change in that particular mission. I've gushed about it a lot now. And the last note I have in the book here is, uh, you know what would be awesome for this game? And I think I mentioned it already, a fighting game spinoff. I want a goddamn Kid Icarus fighting game. Like make it an anime fighter like uh, Blaze Blue or Guilty Gear. But your cast is, you got, you got Pit, Dark Pit, Palutena, Viridi, uh, Thanatos, Hades, uh, Phosphora, Arlon, like there's so much potential there. There's so much. This world has, is, is, has such a unique feel to it and it would be awesome. And there's all kinds of unique loca locales as well. And hey, it's like, it's, you know, familiarly close to Smash Bros. So I want a Kid Icarus fighting game. That's what I want. Phew, sorry, I had so much to say about this game. That was crazy long, I realize. But at long last, uh, we come to the end of our Kid Icarus journey. Uh, sometime down the line, uh, so I, now that we've uh, started this game, this is the first Kid Icarus game we get played on the channel, I'm adding Kid Icarus to our big list of series that we have played a game from. So now Kid Icarus will be able to show up in series polls and uh, well, I guess the three things that will be votable on it will be Kid Icarus 1, Kid Icarus Missing Monsters, and going back to 100% uh, this game. Which I'd love to do sometime because the, the I like the treasure hunt uh, thing I've mentioned quite a bit, and uh, I can't wait to pursue all these uh, all the different hundred percent things we have to get. But for now, at least uh, Earth is at peace. The gods are in relative harmony, <laughs> and so are the people. So that closes the book on this tale. Wonderfully placed, wonderfully silly, wonderful action, some neat storytelling and messaging, a few very minimal gripes. An absolute blast. <laughs> so with Kid Icarus now out of the running for our uh, three games we're playing concurrently, our playthrough order now goes Wii Sports. Oh, wait. <laughs> our playthrough order now goes Wii Sports, Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, Wii Sports, and the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe or whatever it's called. <laughs> yes, indeed, Lee, we'll be starting the Stanley Parable. How exciting, how exciting. There's a lot I don't know about it, and there's a few things I do. I know that it's basically like it's very, uh... It's, it's sort of like a, it's only, it's short. It's supposed to be only like three or four hours. It'll probably only take us like four or five episodes. It's like a, like a, 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 a subversion of expectations kind of game where you follow someone named Stanley. There's a sassy narrator and it like sort of makes fun of and, and explores the idea of storytelling in video games and makes fun of game tropes and has a lot of very clever humor to it and clever writing and stuff. And I'm, it's supposed to be weird and, and a bit of like a mind melter, I think, so. And maybe has multiple endings, so we might be going back through it a few times to try and get them all. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll feel up how everyone's feeling about it when I record the first one. Uh, but the next video on the channel is going to be the Wii Sports that is before uh, the Stanley Parable. So I'll have an arrow pointing to it on the schedule now so you can see what's all going on. And I don't go anywhere after all that because the next game we're starting after uh, the Stanley Parable is Hitman 2 Silent Assassin. It's just called Hitman 2, right? It's not like Hitname... Codename 47-2? No, the first one's just called Hitman Code for Hitman 2 Silent Assassin, the second Hitman game. We recently-ish completed the first one. It was like a little over a year ago that we did that now. When was that? It was July 18th, 2023 that we got the last episode of that out. So it was like 10 months ago-ish. So we're starting the, the second one once one of those three playthroughs, Wii Sports, Spirit of Justice, or Stanley Parable is done. I'm guessing since we're only like a third of the way into the Wii Sports playthrough-ish with the number of medals that we've gotten all and we're only like maybe halfway through Spirit of Justice, uh, it'll be Stanley Parable that goes next. And with that, I don't think there's too much more to say about this playthrough. It was, uh, it's a friggin' good game, dude. I'm quite delighted actually that I didn't play it before this playthrough because I, I, I this is sort of the curse and the blessing of, of uh, playing, uh, doing Let's Plays like this is whenever I start a game I really like, I'm like, oh, this is too much fun. I have to play this on the channel so everyone can share it. But then at the same time, it means I like barely play any games. I got Kid Icarus, I got Kid Icarus Uprising like eight years ago, it, or no, I didn't get it quite then. I got it like, I got it like at the beginning of universities or at the end of high school, I think. So it was like, it was like 2018 or 2019. It was like five or six years ago I got it. Played the first two chapters. I was like, all right, I have to play this on YouTube someday, but not till it gets voted on. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just like haven't sat on this game for like six years and I was like, come on, vote on it. <laughs> but it was totally worth it. So thank you very much for joining Pit and I on our quest. Thank you for laughing with us. Thank you for raging with us. Thank you for shooting a bunch of monsters and making a bunch of jokes. And thank you so very much for coming around to this episode and this playthrough. Hopefully I'll see you around. Animals gonna be out of here now. <gasps>
Goodbye. I'll be seeing you later, I hope. We're going to be playing more video games later. Bye-bye. Uh, it's hard. I, I'm not good at it. <laughs> it, it took time. But that is the end of this episode, therefore. We found the platinum medal. There it be. Uh, so just a quick recap of other details before I close it off. I was thinking I was losing my mind about how the controls for this worked halfway through, so I, I just gave like a quick guess on the thing.